I hope you're doing really welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today, a great video for you. I would say that this video today is pretty much everything that you need to be doing in your golf swing. Because what we are gonna be talking about is how your hands should work. And if you like, how your hands and wrists should effectively work in the golf swing. Now, what you'll get out of this video is not only will you understand what they're supposed to do, but you will also learn that basically your body will have to respond to get the hands into the position that we need them to to execute a repeatable and consistent golf swing. So I'm hoping this video will really, really help many of you golfers out that have got uncertainty about exactly where your hands should be in the golf swing. Let's talk about hands and arms in the golf swing. What I'm gonna do for today's demonstration is actually do it without a club. And like I said, we are trying to understand how our hands are trying to move throughout the swing. And what is essentially trying to happen in the backswing position is we are trying to make our hands travel on a wide an arc as possible and this just basically means that the hands are trying to move should we say as far away from our body as possible in the backswing position but we also need leverage okay so you can imagine with things like chipping and putting because we're only moving our hands and arms to the side of our body on a very short distance this is why we can be incredibly accurate with these shots but we never get any distance, okay? So we also need to incorporate leverage into this as well. And leverage just basically means higher, okay? So those are the two big components in the sort of backswing position that you are basically trying to induce, okay? You are trying to induce width, okay? Making sure your hands stay as far away from your body, not close, so you're not excessively bending. And then you're also trying to demonstrate leverage, okay? And you will naturally move to the best of your capacity, right, to fulfill those two requirements. So if you're somebody who is sliding, you'll notice you're only gonna be able to get so far without sort of bending and cheating on the width. Do you see what I mean? So we don't need to chat about wrist angles and wrist cocking motions and stuff necessarily at the first part of this video, because I don't want it to get too confusing, right? Now, what then needs to happen is that as we start the descent in towards the downswing position is we need to think about what we're trying to achieve. So what we're trying to achieve when we hit the golf ball is we wanna make sure that when we hit the ball, the hands are ahead of the club head, okay? So that means that I'd need to make sure that I'm demonstrating not a position which looks like so, see the way my hands are vertically placed over the ball, certainly not a position like so, <clears throat> see the way my hands, <coughs> excuse me, are behind the ball, we are trying to make sure that we deliver a position where my hands are in front of the ball. And what you can see is when I do this is the way that my, my sort of biomechanical um, makeup is completely changing, right? So this looks quite flicky and quite stuck. And this looks like a much more sort of professional position that we're trying to get into. So the question would be then, well, how do we avoid looking potentially this way? And how do we end up looking more this way? And the first thing that we need to understand is in the start to the downswing, you need your hands and arms working in front of your body, okay? We don't want our hands and arms getting stuck towards the side of our body. This is gonna be a big problem if you kind of start your downswing and your arms get stuck to the side. We want our hands and arms in front of the body coming in towards the downswing, okay? Like so. And then from there, then we can again, just apply the same concept of width coming in towards that through swing. So for the first part of this video, what we are basically summing up is the importance of width, leverage, and impact, width, and leverage, okay? Now, in the second part of this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use a slightly stronger reference for now, if we're gonna grab the club, how the club should be for, behave and perform by using the wrists, and what we're going to do finally in this video is we're going to take a look at somebody who I'm working with online and he's somebody who's kind of, should we say, a little bit more here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a little drill with you as to how I'm trying to encourage him to learn how to hit the ball more this way and get out of the habit of this way. So I'm hoping that by the time we conclude this video, you're going to be in a really strong position of knowing exactly what it is that you should be doing. But I'm hoping already by just understanding the width component, that that's starting to maybe, you know, get you guys thinking, get the cogs turning about some of the possible vulnerability positions that you're in in the backswing position. Okay, so if we kind of understand just generally that 
to keep it really simple that the hands are just trying to work as wide as they possibly can, then there will bring other questions. So then it's kind of like, okay, well, what did the wrists do in the golf swing and the importance that they play? And to understand this, fundamentally, the only thing that you have to understand is, is playing. Okay, and we've talked about this a few times on the channel, but it's really worth, even if you think that you've seen this before, it's really worth watching this because it's amazing how many people that have seen this type of video in the past, they've watched it, and then they've actually ended up reaching out and we've working together online and they've misinterpreted the information. Plus, when I talk about impact in this, that's when, you know, alarm bells are really gonna start ringing for loads of you. So, like I said, what we need to do is we need to understand how and what plane basically means. So how does it work and what is it? Well, what we have is we have to obviously in this environment, just imagine that the blue cane here, okay, is my target line in the distance. So in your target line, you would have a line, obviously an imaginary sort of vector line that would run continuously all the way back and all the way through towards my target in the golf swing. And what we're gonna concentrate on, because we're concentrating on what the hands are doing, is we're really gonna be focusing, obviously, on how the hands are influencing the handle of the golf club, right? And how the different effects have on this. But the thing that gives it an even stronger visual is gonna be using my laser pen. Okay, so the pure simplicity is that we have two rules, right? The golf ball, because we're trying to concentrate on the handle, okay, the handle is gonna control the shaft, and therefore the club head is obviously, should we say, sort of opposite the actual shaft of the club. So our reference is gonna be that we are trying to point the shaft of the club on the target line throughout its whole journey. And what this would mean is that the golf ball would be located just on the other side of it like so, and this would encourage us to keep the club moving on plane, right? So let's kind of get stuck into it. So basically what I'm suggesting, first and foremost, is that when we take hold of the club, we'll get ourselves in our posture and we'll get set up in such a way that if I just keep the laser pen here, you can see the way the laser pen is shining down towards the light, right? And that means the club head at this moment in time would be just opposite it, located on the back of the ball. So as I take the club back, like I said earlier, all we're trying to do in the early backswing position is just kind of get the feeling that we're moving the club to the side of the body. Now, what also happens is I would try and suggest that you just get a bit of a feeling of a hinging action. So can you see the way that I'm able to sort of take the club back by hinging the back of my right wrist? And this is just allowing that laser pen to travel in a straight line. Now already there might be a few of you that think, yeah, but that, the club doesn't travel in a straight line. And that's a very valid point. But what happens, you see, if I kind of rest this down here, is that yes, you can see the way that the laser pen travels in a straight line, but the club head works on the arc. So throughout the swing, as long as the shaft points down in a straight line, this will actually encourage the club head to work on an arc. Very, very important information. So we get set up and in that early backswing position, we could introduce a bit of a hinging action and that would help us take the club back. But in its simplicity, up to the point when the club travels back to the point when the club shaft would be now horizontal, it would continue to travel in a straight line. Now, if I turn this upside down, okay, so then once I've got to the takeaway position, then I start to, shall we say, um, like we spoke about earlier, my trail arm will bend and this will start to induce an element of wrist cock, okay? This means thumbs up, that sort of 90 degree angle. And yet again, we can see the way that the, the green line, which is representing, which means my shaft, is pointing again down towards that line. And this would be a great reference to being on plane. Now, in the backswing position, admittedly, it doesn't matter if you deviate off plane, right? It doesn't really matter if you take the club out there or potentially too much in here. And it doesn't matter at the top of the backswing whether you get the club more laid off, which means you can see the laser pen is pointing more above my target line, or more vertical. That really doesn't matter. I'm not too concerned about that. But when it does become really important, really, is coming in towards that downswing position. So in the backswing position, as long as you're creating that wrist cock so you've got some power, 
and you can create some wrist hinge if you want to. You can do less wrist hinge. You can have more of a flexed wrist. You can have more of a slightly neutral wrist. You could even be slightly extended if you want. Do you see what I mean? Like there's a multitude of ways and that, we don't want to go into that sort of realm of complexity. So in the downswing is obviously much more important. Now what I'm going to do for, to represent the downswing is I'm just going to place another line which would be parallel towards my target line on the ground here. Okay, because we often get the term shallowing in the golf swing. And what shallowing means is that as we swing up to the top and we start to bring the club down, the club shallows, which means it starts to behave on a more, should we say, horizontal angle like so. And that's what that second line is going to represent. So we've completed our backswing position. We're in wherever we are, whether we are like so, whether we're flexed like we spoke about, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is as we now start the downswing, what we need to do is we need to make sure that as we start to bring it down, that the laser pen travels through the target line or shallow, right? Can you see the way then it could be going this way? It could be here. It could be here. It could even be more laid off than that. Those things don't matter. But what's important is that it has to still run parallel, right? So what you can't do is you can't swing the club up and then just have the shaft going off in that sort of direction. It has to run parallel through. Now, the thing that's going to do this as you start the downswing is obviously going to be your rotational motion, okay? So as you start the downswing, all you've got to concentrate on is that your hands are wanting to work in front of your body, like we spoke about earlier. Yes, yeah, staying in front of the chest. And as we sort of turn the chest, this means as long as that laser pen never travels, should we say, on this journey, this is a no-no. And that's a no-no. As long as it runs parallel, either through the target line or above the target line, that's absolutely fine. This means that you are staying pretty much on plane. And what that'll do, any of you that get your arms too trapped to the side of your body, what you're generally going to find is that it's generally going to lead to a more vertical motion, which means the sh it would come down this way. And that means that you end up compensating then to try and keep the club on plane by not turning. OK, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. Here's the big thing, though, OK, especially for any of you that suffer when it comes to that impact area. Now, what needs to happen is even if you are somebody who has shallowed the golf club, which means that it's traveled above the target line, by the time the club has traveled down and it's now, should we say, parallel placed, what is really important is that as we come back into the hitting area is that the laser pen has to come back through the target line. So once the club reaches horizontal, that, that reference has gone. OK, it has to travel solely through the target line. And that's where some people that I teach get a little bit lost. OK, so that means that we have accepted wide, wide. Obviously, the turn would help. Now, as we're coming into the hip, your hands are more in front of the body. OK, so as you'll see in a moment, you can see the way that the laser pen is coming through the line. I would have rotated coming in. So I'm going to keep my head focused on the back of the ball. And then what's going to happen here is that I'm just going to concentrate on getting the back of my left wrist pointing towards the target line, coming in towards that hitting area. Exactly the same as what we demonstrated earlier with the reference like so. OK, that's exactly the same. So because my hands have been in front of my body, I can now rotate the back of my left wrist so that I travel through the target line and then continue through. That's really important. So that would then translate into something like so. So you would swing back, you would start your sort of downswing. And then as we come in towards this hitting area, what we're obviously trying to do is get the feeling of rotating the back of the left wrist, keeping that sort of, should we say, that sort of relationship where we talked about with the hands earlier whilst tracing that line through the hit and that's going to deliver an impact which will look much more like so. So what I think is the most sensible thing to do now is just have a look at an example of what I would class as a very typical amateur fault and how we're going around that education to try and fix it. So we have Pete's swing, right? 
So this is something that what we're going to do on the channel is not only am I going to just review a swing and point out some of the obvious stuff, what I'm hoping is two things. One, you'll relate to what Pete's kind of going through. Um, for those of you that suffer with impact and, and what we're trying to get across is this sort of message. And, and two, um, what I'm also hoping is by doing some of the drills and, and chatting through and documenting this in weeks, months, whenever it might be, we can kind of go, look, this is where Pete is now. This is what we did to get to this level of progression. And you guys can try and follow that if you think it's necessary. So what I'm going to do is, and you'll see why we're using Pete as, as the sort of example. So if we um, do a couple of little references in this video. So the first one, if, if we pop up the line in here through the elbow line. Now that's what's known as your incline plane. Okay, so if I put another line in, roughly sort of parallel to where um, we kind of presume Pete would be aiming, which is pretty much over the buggy at this moment in time. Um, now the green line obviously represents the target line. Okay, so what we'll see, and this is what I was trying to suggest earlier, is that if your laser pen points down towards your target line, this would also mean that the club would run up the incline line. So anyway, let's run through the swing. So the early backswing, we're okay here. Like I said, we're not going to be trying to look for something in, in utter perfection. Arms may be a little bit close to the body, possibly. That could be something that when Pete sees this, this will be, you know, kind of hopefully a bit of a you know, a, a different perspective for him as well. What we talked about in the first part of today's video was solely about width, that you're trying to get your arms away from your body. I personally don't think we're in a bad position here though. What happens as we initiate the downswing? Let's pause, um, let's already sort of pause, where should we go? Should we go up one frame? Let's go up here. So one of the things that Pete's become more aware of is plane. OK, and this is something that, you know, we've kind of spoken about together. So what we can see here is if we draw a line through the shaft of the club, this is OK, this sort of position, because like we talked about earlier, it doesn't have to point perfectly down to the line. As long as it points above the line, then this again is, is completely acceptable. Um, as we start to come down, obviously with a bit of camera distortion, but again, we would draw a line. This would be again in a, a solid reference sort of position. OK, so the problem that we sort of have Let's just quickly reintroduce that one. Um, let's go through the elbow line. So the problem that we do have, though, and that we'll see is that although Pete's on plane, right, as we can see here, the issue that we have is that obviously his impact position is compromised, which means he's kind of quite a flicky sort of hitter. And if we kind of just go back up from the start of the downswing journey again, what we can see is the problem is the way that the right elbow is just lost to the side of the body. So because of the lack of rotation in his swing, that means he's not able to get his arms more in front of his body. And that's sort of the thing with Pete, as I see with many amateur golfers. So he's on plane, right? That's the confusing thing. It's like he can hit straight shots and he can hit some pretty decent shots, but his arms are stuck to the side of his body, which makes him vulnerable. So what I'm gonna to do to sort of conclude today's video is I'm just gonna now talk about what we've been working on and like I say, hopefully that will help you guys out as well. A bit in today's session, we've learned some simplicity stuff that you're just looking for width. We've talked about that your wrists are basically doing whatever they need to do to help you stay on plane. And we've discussed what plane is. And we're now finishing the lesson, having a look at somebody that I'm working with. So it relates to hopefully other golfers that are struggling and you, you will be struggling, right? So what we kind of saw we just go back into uh, using my laser pen, which is over here. Um, what we kind of saw with, with Pete's swing is that he was swinging the golf club on plane, but in such a way where he sort of started the downswing, you know, his arms kind of came down to the side of his body. This is fine, right? Everybody's arms operate this way. It's just obviously when Pete starts turning more, that's why his arms will be more in front of his body because he had a lack of turn. That's why his arms look down here. But the problem is, is his elbow got so sort of stuck to the side of him that the only way he can really hit it is exactly what we talked about earlier. He can't hit it by now maintaining the angle that he wanted to. And the reason why is because he would just hit it miles out, right? So if he's in here, he, he, he can't kind of just go from here, even though he's on plane and just sort of decide to, you know, what can you do? You can't rotate from here, that would never work. So if he was to hold onto his wrist angles, he would hit it 
miles off to the right. So obviously he doesn't do that, which leads to the flip, which goes back to the first fundamental principle of we're trying to hit it this way, we're not trying to hit it this way. And then that was basically it. So what I've tried to get Pete to do is a great drill. And this is what I wanted to share with you to sort of finish off, and this is really important, is what I've kind of been saying to him is, okay, well, what I want you to do is he can demonstrate this position here, right? I just say to him, swing up to the top, get your elbow in front of your hip, like so, because this normally helps you trigger chest rotation instead of going this way anyway. Now, from here, what I said to him is, okay, now your hands, right, are, are more in front of you. Okay, so finding the laser pen on the line now is going to feel very different than finding it from here because this is quite flippy. Now from here, how are you going to do it? And this is what I wanted to share with you because this is probably the most important thing. And this is what I would class as, as my, in my coach, I'm looking for, as a coach, I'm looking for two things when I'm working with an individual. The first one is the most important and it's conscious competence, which politely means that if you can't demonstrate it in a drill or in slow motion, it won't materialize in your golf swing at all because it means that you have a lack of understanding for the correct thing that you're trying to change. So that's conscious competence. The second thing then is what I'm always looking for, which is not that relative to today, is okay, then you need the ability to exaggerate the feeling, okay? But for Pete, it's kind of like we're getting here and what he did in his first reply to me is he kind of just turned his shoulders to try and find plane. So he managed to get the laser pen following the line, but his shoulders were like, you know, 30, 40 degrees open. You can't hit the golf ball this way. So my last tip for you is you swing up, hands and arms in front of your body like so. And then the last part of the hit is if you watch my watch face on my, uh, on my lead hand, that now needs to just rotate towards the target. Okay, like so. But whilst we're doing that, we need to get this to follow the line. So it really is the back of that left wrist when you come in towards the hit, which is gonna be success and failure. See the way that what I'm doing is I'm demonstrating an element of what's known as sort of ulnar deviation, which means that sort of casting mechanism. And I'm also rotating to get the watch back to square. Therefore, if I put my trail wrist back on, this is just supporting that hit. That's what I mean. Any sort of this motion is gonna really jeopardize that impact position. So you really wanna be going wide, in front and then from here I would just practice just getting used to see the way that all I'm doing from here is just rotating my watch towards the target and following the, the laser pen through the line and what that's going to do is that's going to translate into this which is a much better hitting area and I will let you know how we get on together hopefully you've enjoyed this video um, lots and lots of details, completely get that, but I think it's really important because I think that what we're doing on these videos is that it's going to resonate much stronger with golfers rather than just doing little drips of information. So always appreciate a thumbs up now more than ever um, because I think that by doing these types of videos is going to help you guys get a much stronger level of understanding for what we're doing moving forward. Remember, it's free to subscribe. If you're going to do so, press the little bell icon. That means that you receive notifications every time a new video comes out. I'll speak to you guys again really soon.